morning, everyone. Welcome uh, to this seminar at 9 a.m. It's great to see so many people here. Uh, Expanded Cinema and the Art Institution is the title of today's seminar. Uh, my name is Stephen Cairns. I'm Curator of Artists, Film and Moving Image at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London. Uh, I'm joined today by Carolina Lopez from CCCB in Barcelona and Mikael Nanfeld from Gothenburg Constal. Um, the format of today's seminar is going to be quite informal. I'm going to give a little bit of a, a presentation, just talking about some of the, the questions we'll, we'll be discussing later on. Uh, I'll also give you a bit of information about my programme uh, in London. Uh, I think Carolina will do something similar just to give you some background on uh, her programme in Barcelona. Um, Mikael, of course, uh, is... Uh, based in Gothenburg. I hope you have all seen his exhibition, uh, Let Me Tell You a Story. It's on at the Constal until the 1st of February, so uh, we'll be talking about that as well, and I hope you all have an opportunity to see it if you haven't. Um, so this, the seminar, Expanded Cinema and the Art Institution, it's a big, a big uh, title for a massive subject, so what I'm going to do is kind of try and reduce it a little bit and propose some, some questions to you. They're questions I ask myself. Uh, and I'm constantly dealing with, uh, on a daily basis, with uh, the program at ICA. Um, and hopefully these questions are relevant to the panel as well, and to you in the audience, and maybe uh, there are questions you want to pick up afterwards. We'll be around if you want to ask us any individual questions. So I say artist versus apparatus, and, and you, you say, what does that mean? That's also quite a big question. Um, so, so my, my big uh, interest is in how artists or artist filmmakers negotiate the medium, negotiate the medium of moving image, uh, and the format itself, and the format going from things like transfer preservation uh, straight through to the scale of projection, uh, installation in galleries or screenings in cinemas. Um, and how that relates to the opportunities that are available to artists and artists filmmakers. Uh, not only that, how that relates to technology and how technology, opportunities and uh, gallery constructs all impact on the work that's uh, produced. Uh, and the big question is how does that actually affect the work that's made? Does it influence the filmmakers and artists and what they're making to make it suitable to uh, the formats available to show, uh, to show the work? Uh, so how do we define artists who work with a moving image? It's something that people, the people often ask. They, they, they don't, uh, there is no easy definition there um, because the artists and filmmakers cross both worlds. So you may find an artist who will make work for the gallery uh, context that also shows in, in film festivals. So what we're really interested in exploring is the cross-pollination here and how, how those two worlds meet and where, where they meet. And if it's possible to exist in both worlds, uh, you tend to find possibly that you uh, encounter filmmakers that have been official filmmakers, and that's how they would describe themselves in the 70s uh, and into the 80s, who now occupy a uh, gallery context. So something we'll, we'll talk about later on. Uh, and why do we need to, to identify uh, how we define artists working with the moving images, the question you pr you're probably asking. And I think it's a very important question because the area is so vague, but the area is vague and we need to investigate more in order to be able to support uh, artists um, who are working uh, within the medium, um, to support them in exhibition, to make, to make sure that the, the apparatus that I referred to earlier doesn't influence the work and that the work has room to grow and breathe and exist uh, as it should do. So I work at Institute of Contemporary Arts in London. We're a, a multidisciplinary venue. We have two cinemas, a theatre, exhibition spaces and talk spaces. We have no collection and from the initiation of uh, Institute of Contemporary Arts in the 1940s, uh, the idea is that the, the organization is for artists. It was funded by artists. Um, so there's always been a cross-pollination of ideas. It's where architects, dancers, choreographers, artists, poets, uh, it was a meeting place. And in the early stages of the, the 50s, 60s, it was the only contemporary arts institution with no collection in the UK. It's a model that's uh, perpetuated across the globe. Um, 
so what do I do there? My, uh, my main program, which is a sort of three to four times a month program, takes place in the cinema. It's called Artist Film Club. Uh, and it's an opportunity to work with artists who are currently making work. It's a big focus for me to present uh, programs of living artists' work who are currently making, and that kind of is the focus. Uh, the focus because I want to be able to bring the artists to, to London and to ICA, and because our audience is made up of artists and uh, other people with general interest in, in the subject, I want people to be able to engage with the artists, not just and watching the work, but also hearing them speak and being able to, uh, to ask questions. Um, so that's a program we run um, three to four times a month. It's roughly divided into two thematics, so profile projects with artists, which tend to be retrospective programs of their work. Uh, they'll come and speak and screen the work in the cinema, and then thematic uh, group screenings. We also run an artist film biennial. It's a biennial. Um, festival uh, of artist film and what I, what I do there is basically divide the program into three strands. So there's a discursive element, uh, a screening program that's curated by curators and a screening program that's curated by artists. Um, we operate a national moving image network which propagates the program we do at ICA. So a number of venues across the, U uh, the UK share our programs. So once it's screened at ICA, the program then travels to the other venues, giving the artists an opportunity to, to share their work across, um, across the UK. It's a project we're expanding into Europe and developing at the moment. And uh, hopefully, you'll see uh, more of uh, our program reaching further, further afield. Um, we work on TV commissions. We've recently done five commissions for Channel 4 artist films that uh, were made within the context of television and shown uh, on TV. Uh, and we also have gallery exhibitions that feature artist film. So artist film kind of reaches all areas of our program. There's no, although we have an artist film club, with uh, screenings in the cinema. It's all really down to pragmatics, and the, the cinema ultimately ends up being the most comfortable solution because we have uh, all of the, the sound, the screen, the seats, the projectors in one place. Uh, there are different types of artists move an image, of course. Uh, those, those are uh, installations which function within an installed space, and that space could be a cinema, but also a gallery. Um, single channel works, looped works, uh, multi channel and uh, single channel narrative works. Those are some, they're not all. I'm sure uh, the, the other panelists will, will co contribute uh, later on. Um, so that's, uh, th this is going to be, this bit is about artists film in uh, the cinema. Uh, this is our cinema in London. Um, it's 186 seats, and, and I mentioned earlier that it's a place where everything is in one place, so we have 35 millimeter projectors, 16 millimeter projectors, VHS, Digibeta, everything. It's all there, and ultimately, um, it's a practical solution to showing artists film on a regular basis. Um, sorry, where are we? Um, what I try and do with, with events in the cinema is frame them as discursive events. So I mentioned earlier, we bring in artists to speak about their work. Uh, it's an opportunity to engage with the audience. Um, and um, it's really a, a kind of key aspect of the ICA's broader program is that we're a base for discussion. Um, we can also present full programs. So where an artist may only show one installed work in a gallery in one country in one year, we can show 10 years worth of work in a program while acknowledging the fact that we may not be watching the work in its original context. So it may have been intended to be shown as an installation, but uh, in this instance, we screen it uh, within the cinema. Uh, so artists moving image in the gallery. Now this has many forms, and, and I want to talk about this a bit a bit later on. So I'm going to just um, flick through some some examples here. This is a, a exhibition we did uh, last year with a French artist called Nell Belufa. 
Um, it was a project my colleague Mark Williams worked on. Um, Neil is someone that we worked with in the artist film program two years ago, presenting a kind of monographic screening of his films. Uh, that was a discussion that was quite long, and we, we formatted a screening program that in some ways acknowledged the fact that his films normally are shown in, in situations like this. So Neil always, uh, he, uh, he makes a film, and the films are very, very uh, cohesive as films in their own right, but what he does in his installations and sculptural works is incorporates the films into them. You'll see here, uh, there's a projection on the left-hand side. In this instance, he also installed video cameras. So the video cameras were projecting back live into, uh, and he'll, he will, will probably not forgive me for tr describing it in such a crude manner, but the, the video that was filmed in the gallery was incorporated into one of his films, which made a sort of live, live, um, live work incorporating the audience. And again, here we have a film that we showed in the cinema two years ago, now projected onto a sculpture, and the sculpture has moving parts. Um, so when you, when you present work in the gallery, uh, the, main, the main things you have to deal with are the installation itself. In this instance, Neil always projects onto works that he brings into the space. Uh, you have the, the question of sound, and when you present more than one work in one space, how do you deal with the fact that there will be sound spill into, into both works, and how do those works kind of interact together? You've also got to deal with projection and lighting conditions, and that to a certain extent is something that uh, Neil, in this instance with this piece, is um, experimenting with a, li a little bit, but you can see in this instance, we're in, we're in daylight conditions, and, th and these are all kind of factors that ultimately impact on the work. In these instances, the films that were shown are all fairly long, sort of 20 minutes, uh, and the duration of a work in that situation is also something you've got to deal with. Uh, as a curator, you have to think of how the audience deals with um, a duration of work that may be halfway through, or may have just started, or may have just finished, and has no distinguishable beginning and end, um, and ultimately, do you eventually end up building a cinema within the gallery uh, in some instances? So another question I want to ponder a little bit is, um, are we talking about artists who use moving image, or are we talking about filmmakers who occupy the gallery? Um, I think this is an interest in question thinking about uh, examples of an older gener generation of filmmakers such as Kenneth Anger, who is a, a, a fairly well-known well figure and revered figure, uh, who, who would show, um, show his films in small cinemas. And that really was where he existed, as he was acknowledged as a filmmaker. Now his work is, sh is shown in galleries, and galleries have become the home to, to his work. And I think that transition, or the... Uh, the opening up of the gallery and the closing down of the, the regular cinema space is an interesting, an interesting question to ponder. And, and I always think, does it have any relation to the fact that uh, now independent cinema in its traditional form really doesn't exist? And the, the opportunity to exhibit and to, to produce is only really possible within a gallery context. And, and that gallery context has its compromises and its, uh, its own problems. And, and how does that affect the work? And how can we make it better for the artists, filmmakers to, to kind of exist within that, within that format? Um, you tend to find now that these sort of moving image works are funded by galleries. Uh, they're supported and distributed through galleries. And that may be through, um, through a network of venues that co-commission a work. Um, and the gallery becomes a support structure for the, produ the production of work. And it may then fe uh, feature in film festivals. Um, there are a number of artists that are examples of people that kind of cross over into filmmaking world. Steve McQueen possibly is a kind of prime example of someone who's moved uh, into the filmmaking world, the mainstream filmmaking world, and has been successful. And I'm interested in how funding structures have, are slowly being put in place to kind of promote that and what that means as well. My last slide, sorry, this is another example of um, a work we showed at ICA, uh, Cyprian Guillard's installation, which is a 35 millimeter film 
So transfer from an iPhone video to 35 millimeter film, and we have a 35 millimeter projector in the gallery. So, so he's really bringing the cinema into the gallery, and it's an, inter an interesting piece because he is adamant that it should be shown in this way. Um, another example, just just to explain slightly about how, how we have to flex and, and deal with the conditions of the gallery uh, when we show moving image work, I just wanted to, to show you um, some slides of another exhibition we did at ICA uh, with uh, German artist Hito Stau. And this is a project my colleagues Catherine Stout and Juliette de Zorgs worked on. And they really transformed a black box space, but it was a black box space that um, was, uh, had to accommodate more than one film. Uh, so within this space, there were several films. And what we didn't want to do was create a space that really was just a cinema where you had a screen and um, the audience in dialogue with one screen. We did build a kind of set of bleachers that were seats for, for the main piece of work in the, sh in the show. I say main piece because it was the biggest. Um, where the audience would sit, but within this box, um, Another space was built underneath. Uh, there were several other kind of corners and crevices within the space that all had, had films in them. The projection isn't so great here, so you can't see, but actually within the, the seating structure that, that I showed before was a, another cinema or, or black box space. And when we deal with these situations, I find it fascinating because Ultimately, what we do is we reduce the space and we remove the space. In a black box, you have the screen and the, the audience and the relationship between the audience and the screen becomes paramount. And when we, when we offer all these mo multiple possibilities uh, to view a work within that context, I, f I find it very fascinating and it's maybe something we, we, talk about, um, we talk about afterwards. Interestingly, with Hito, from this exhibition, we selected a number of works that were then produced into a screening program. That screening program then was shared with other venues across, across the country. So artists are very willing to kind of be flexible and to uh, try different things with their work. And I think that scalability and flexibility is something that's very interesting, not only for artists who have maybe been working in the field for 30 years, but for, for younger artists who are now considering making work that fits all these different formats that can be viewed online, can be viewed in the cinema, can be viewed within an installation. Um, and perhaps these are, th are things that we're gonna, we're gonna discuss afterwards. I'm now gonna hand over very quickly to uh, Carolina Lopez, who's, who's gonna give a presentation. Have you? It's Hi, uh, good morning. I'm Carolina Lopez. I uh, just wanted to thank very quickly to the Swedish exhibition agency, especially Georgina Sakia, uh, its our manager, and her team, as well as the Gothenburg Film Festival for hosting uh, this event, and you for coming here so early. Uh, I do work for uh, the Center of Contemporary Culture in Barcelona. That's a huge center that holds uh, exhibitions, uh, festivals, uh, conferences, all sorts of cultural activities and was created in the post-Olympic uh, Barcelona, directed initially by a philosopher and um, is devoted basically to the study of um, contemporary culture. 14 years ago, uh, they saw the need of having as many other art centers a uh, film program, so they approached a bunch of uh, curators, among them it was me. I was a programmer then, and they said, 
just is all yours. You know, you can decide upon the, the the content of this film program, the name, the orientation, or everything. So it was like a perfect opportunity to to think about what it was missing in our city, and what it was missing. It was basically in a space for for art, for art films, for experimental films. And uh, that's the way that uh, that eccentric started as um, a, as a film uh, screen. Uh, this is a little promo that we've done of all the pictures you'll see there. Some uh, most of them are recent. This is the the promo we've done for January and February of our program. So you can have a quick look of some of the films we show. from the screenings, we also play attention to Expanded Cinema. That's uh, an installation, for instance, by Sandra Gibson and Luis Recoder. Uh, we've also held the works of Bruce McClure, Ben Russell, among uh, others. And also, it's very important for us uh, the, um, to present uh, every event by the actual artists, or if the artists can be present, the, the curators. Uh, we are a group of curators and uh, that brings a lot of richness to the actual works that we do present and every time that is possible we try to work very closely with the artists on the selection of the films and on the presentation of those films here for instance there is um, Stephen was talking before about artists that occupy the the cinema or filmmakers that occupy uh, the gallery, you know, in that case, it's an artist that it was the first time Patricia Doder, she's a Catalonian artist, it's the first time that she had shown her 16 millimeter films in a in a cinema context, and it was interesting to see uh, her reaction to to that, you know, and the things uh, she saw on her work that she hadn't seen uh, before. Um, Apart from that, in the past, this is something we don't, don't do it now, but we did three editions of a biannual festival called uh, Experimenta, uh, where we, they were seminars where we invited curators and artists internationally to debate about some of the questions that arise here today. Uh, another special project that we did, we did a couple of uh, touring programs. The first one was with films that were already uh, in, um, in cinematics and, uh, and in or private collections. But the second one was, which is from ecstasy to outburst, Arrebato. Uh, and that was that we realized that we had been taking care so much of international experimental films, but we didn't have, or we did have very play little attention to our own heritage, our own uh, Spanish uh, cinema, uh, basically because it was uh, invisible. Uh, it was, uh, it didn't, uh, it wasn't in good condition to actually see it, you know. 
So what we did is we undertook that major project with the help of the central government, the, the, the agency of, uh, for the promotion of uh, Spanish art abroad. And we did this, this project that was recuperating uh, all the, or a big part of uh, our heritage. This is a DVD book, uh, the, uh, that was the catalog, that was a book and DVD. And the program was on 35 millimeters tour the world. It was on the, uh, in London at the Tate Modern, in uh, the National uh, Gallery in Washington, Je de Pomme in Paris. So it did a big tour of like two or three years of, um, of uh, Spanish experimental film. Now we are undertaking a new project on, on, on that, but that would be on Spanish animation and also will hopefully tour uh, internationally. Uh, in, in 2007, and this is where I'll talk about specifically uh, the um, uh, Georgina uh, was interested on, on me talking about our archive because Eccentric started as a film program, but we develop other activities and among one of our main uh, uh, activities is this eccentric archive. Why do I show this exhibition? That's because that's, uh, that's not entertainment. That was to celebrate the five years of eccentric. We did this exhibition in 2007. And here is where the eccentric archive was born. Uh, as Stephen noted, uh, one of the things curators ask ourselves when we have to curate an exhibition is, Am I going to screen the entire film? And I'm going, am I going to put an excerpt? Am I going to change the format and instead of 35, 16 mil, I'm going to show it on video? You know, all those are questions that you ask yourself. And in this exhibition, at that time, because Eccentric, we started showing very much the classics of uh, experimental film. So, for instance, you know, they were like uh, filmings, that's an installation, uh, Gustav Dodge, we show, among many other things, uh, originals, <coughs> that's from Sistiaga, uh, uh, um, an artist that does uh, hand-painted uh, film in Spain. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I mix the names. That's, that's Arnold Reiner uh, installation. Uh, also, we show all sort of like uh, montage and uh, film, uh, letters film, that's by Guy Debord, all sort of, you know, it was basically a, a, an exhibition, an experimental film. And at the end of that exhibition, the curator saw the need to show the films they've taken little excerpts, because most of them were excerpts, to show them entirely. And uh, so, uh, apart from some books also and everything, um, we install here, that picture is not that great, but we install a couple of screens. The one on the left, it's, it's much bigger than it seems <coughs> because it goes further down the, the gallery. And then the little one here on the right hand side, uh, it was an, an archive. It was an archive with 300 films. Uh, a collect. Some of them were films that had been shown only excerpts in the in the actual exhibition in the gallery. Some others were by the same authors, but to complete, you know, the vision on those artists. And some others were just films that were relevant to the discourse of the exhibition. You know, the title uh, does not entertainment film but gets film. It was basically the the film for that ask about itself. You know. And um, so this, how, this is how our archive started. We did produce an interface, especially to call the films by uh, chronological, by alphabetic order, uh, by even geographically and so on. So uh, this is a little promo again we did back then where, I mean, it's, you can see a little bit how this interface uh, works to call the to call the films.
So when the exhibition was over, it was we thought it was a shame just all this work that we had done because obviously every film was we, we wrote a text on the films and the director and so on, and uh, and people liked it. All of a sudden, the I mean the actual exhibition, the the whole idea was like even general audiences to come closer to this kind of unknown uh, film for most of people. So. Um, so we managed to to keep that archive, and even though we were um, we had different sets in the in the CCCB, I think like three or four in three or four different places they were moving us around because there's many activities and many things going on. So they were moving us every year from one place to the next until I think two three years ago they they let us use the beautiful space, and now it's ours and it's not going to move from here. So we're very happy about that. And this, uh, and this space uh, is the eccentric um, archive. Now, um, of course, that doesn't mean that uh, we are very aware uh, and try to make people aware that that's not the kinematic experience. You know, this is something else. Of course, we do still show in films in the in the in the theater, but uh, because it's a digital, uh, of course, a digital archive, uh, it is a curated archive. Doesn't mean that automatically all the films that we show in eccentric go to the to the archive. That's impossible to begin with because some filmmakers they just don't want to show their film digital, they just stick to the original 35, 16 mils format. But, uh, but somehow we try to bring uh, some of the artists that we show an eccentric and also some others that maybe, uh, for in one of the examples it would be McLaren for instance, that for us was too obvious to show on the film, even though now you've seen it here because one of the artists, Pierre Hébert, that was a disciple to McLaren has programmed McLaren in one of his uh, programs, but for instance, other artists that we think will uh, will be very interested in a in an archive uh, context because this is this is free entrance. It's open. Uh, it's open um, every day uh, during the week except of Monday. The same uh, opening hours of the exhibition. So it's like from. 11 in the morning until 8 p.m. You can access, uh, you can, it, it is an on-site, of course, you know, we only show the films. There's these two, this two places to where you can, two ways where you can sh see films. There's like those little three sets of uh, small screens with headphones. And then there is one for, for group consultation as well. So uh, even though this is only, you can only see the films on site in Barcelona, you have all the information of the films online, so you can make yourself uh, your, many of you want to watch before, before going. Uh, and nowadays we have over 800 titles. It's an alive archive because we try to, to, to do new incorporations every season. And, uh, uh, I don't know <laughs> what is the picture anyway. Uh, the the um, the archive allowed us uh, allowed us. Uh, it's very good for us for uh, not, not only offering an opportunity to, to researchers to actually see films that otherwise would be very very difficult. You know nowadays we're lucky because we have you know some uh, some some of those films online, but uh, still many, many of the films included in the archive, you cannot see them online. Maybe they are edited on DVD, or but but they are still hard, films too hard to access, you know. And and also the archive allowed us uh, to, to build a community because it's a place that is there every day, all the time. We do a lot of uh, workshops and and activities related to that. Uh, that's Rose Loader, one uh, filmmaker that visited us uh, recently and we did a projection of her films and after that we went with her to the archive because she deposited some of her films in our archive and she was explaining about her creative process and so on. Um, also we do whole seminars around around uh, some, using some of the films or reflecting about 
uh, some of the films that we have included in the archives. And the last one that took place just a few months ago is the wild image. It was uh, asking us questions about what it means uh, outside of film. You know, we know it's a term that is widely used in art, but, um, but uh, we found that it was very little written about outside the film. So we, start, we invited a bunch of filmmakers and uh, curators and artists to debate about, around that, you know, and this is part also of the eccentric archive activities. And uh, basically, this is, uh, in brief, what we do at Eccentric and at Eccentric Archive. This is our building, the main door from the outside, where you are very welcome to come if you are in Barcelona. Thank you very much. I'm back on. Uh, Mika, I wonder, would you would you say a few words just about uh, the exhibition that you have on just now, about how how you kind of conceived the exhibition, and also about how it's installed, so for the audience, so you so they get some sort of idea of how it looks in the exhibition, because it isn't a traditional format. <coughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, well, the exhibition we have right now. Let me tell you the story. So. Well, it, it's based on a few conditions. Um, first, uh, from the film festival's part, saying that it's got to be Nordic films, and it's got to be quite new. Mm -hmm. uh, I extended it back to uh, 2013. Um, um, and it, and it's, it, it, it was also worked out quite fast since uh, the, the artistic director for the film festival and me, we met first and discussed the possibility of doing this mid-June 14, and, and, and we decided to go ahead with it late August, at the turn of the month, August, September. So from in the mid-September until uh, November, I started to, um, started to research and try to decide what to show. Um, in the beginning of the research, I decided quite uh, instantly to, to just show, uh, I don't know why, but I decided to show only single channel narrative works. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm, I know from the beginning I would make it difficult for myself, in a way. Because it's a kind of small space and I would have difficulties with the sound and the light and things like that. But even though I decided to show only single channel narrative works. And that is perhaps, in a way, what is an artistic film and what is not? Uh, what is, uh, we're talking about video art or whatever, you know. What is it, uh, can we say that this is, uh, 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 come back to the, the, the discussion you initiated with, the, the how do we define things? Mm -hmm. And if I look back for the, uh, if, if I'm looking back a number of years, I can see that there is a lot of narrative moving image or films inside exhibitions with, which have a quite long running time, mm -hmm. 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and so on. Um, so even though I, I know from the beginning that this will make some, uh, create some problems, but those problems are interesting to deal with. How do I deal with the space and how do I create a situation with only narrative mm -hmm. single channel works? Um, and after a while in that process of deciding I also decided to, to show uh, works that you can say are based in some kind of a documentary practice. You see a relation to a documentary practice and a relation to uh, works that deals with uh, archives, documents, historical uh, artifacts in a sense, and historical narratives. So, uh, but perhaps that choice is based on what, kind of what interests me as a curator, but I did decide to do that. So, uh, and uh, it turned out to be seven films in this exhibition. And they could have been shown in a cinema setting as well as this. Uh, even though I, um, perhaps they are not. Um, they are all, except one, um, artists working with moving images. There's just one of them who uh, comes from a director's uh, 
uh, from the uh, from filmmaking uh, filmmakers uh, part. Um, <coughs> uh, 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 looking back, when I had made my choices, I, I, I can say that when I'm looking at it afterwards, it was not, it was not an idea from the beginning. But when I looked at looking at it afterwards, I could see that for some reasons. Uh, for some reason, they, they all deals with some kinds of idea of the uh, issues from the 20th century. So, um, the idea of progress, the, uh, the scientific, you can measure everything and you can, you can develop everything. You know, some of the things we have started to question uh, late uh, during the 80s and 90s and the postmodern times. But I could see afterwards that all these films deals with something that comes from 20th century, especially perhaps as after the Second World War period. But that is not something I thought of from the beginning, but I, I just realized it when I looked at it, uh, took an overview of it. Uh, in the beginning, I, was, I had an idea of just showing it, making it really difficult for everybody, uh, just showing it in an open space you know, from different angles. But I realized during the Christmas, I was sitting there a couple of days after Christmas holiday and thinking this becomes just too impossible for everybody. Mm. Uh, so I started to make some kind of a, uh, cine a exhibition setting. And <coughs> the idea with the, the exhibition setting today is that I didn't want to create black boxes, separate black, seven black boxes within the gallery space, because then I started to create small cinemas mm -hmm. you walk into. Uh, I still wanted everybody, uh, I, I still want you to be able to get a sense of all the films in a way, if you, even though you cannot get a, a sense of all them. But I wanted the film to talk to each other in a way. Mm -hmm. So if I'm standing at one point, I can see at least three other films going on, even though I cannot really uh, be part of them. But I can see something happening. I, I'm walking definitely inside an exhibition. And the, and the exhibition I created is also, in a way, comes out of the, what I can see the themes are of some of the films. You know, uh, some of, uh, Many of these uh, artists deals with questions of uh, fiction and reality, identity, uh, the self in, in versus the, uh, something, uh, the national politics or uh, global politics. But it's some kind of a duality between something. And I created an uh, exhibition that is, is based on this duality. There is an inside and that there is an outside. So it, it's, uh, yeah. yeah and, and what about duration? Because the, the films in the exhibitions, I think the shortest is around about 10 minutes and the yeah. longest is an, an hour and a half. Is, yeah. is that right? How did you negotiate that? Because I know it's when I was in the exhibition, you, you give some guide as to when the films will start and finish and, yeah. and the films aren't on loop. So I just wondered why did you decide to give it that structure? Um, why the structure of... The, the films starting at specific times and moments where there'll be nothing on screen? Yeah, because there, there, are, there are, in a sense, there, they, they are, there, because there are stories in a way. They, they begin at a certain point and they end at a certain point. They are not, they are not, they are not created as loops, mm -hmm. just going on and on and on. So um, I, my idea was that I, I would give two things, the possibility to take part of it in the exhibition that they're going on, there's things going on and I can decide what to do, but also giving you the opportunity to know when things start. Mm -hmm. At this point it starts, I can sit down here, I can choose just to look at this film and mm -hmm. skip the rest. Yeah. Um, and um, I didn't, when I chose the films I didn't have any uh, idea about why this became 10 minutes and this uh, one and a half, I'm just from the beginning, I chose films that interested me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I decide because of the short time. I, I, that's, that's the only starting point I have. It has to interest me in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the fact that, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a problem when you include, I mean, the effective time of the exhibition is like four hours or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't know why you have to be able to see an exhibition in 10 minutes yeah. at the same time. You can come back over and over again because it's a, it's open daily and it doesn't. We don't charge any fees. So. Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's interesting. I think I've, I've noticed, particularly in my own research and, and research and artists who are currently making films, there are uh, more and more artists w working in uh, the narrative structure. So they will give their film a beginning and an end. Um, and the, the format is flexible in that, in that way, so they can send someone a Vimeo preview to watch the film from beginning to end. It can be shown in the gallery, it can be shown in a screening, it can be shown at a film festival. It could also be shown in an installation. And I think it's interesting in that respect, because in your exhibition, all of those works, there is a bit of flexibility in the, in the work. It could be conceived in a different way. And in, in, in that way, I think it's quite interesting because the constraints of the gallery space don't impose anything on the work. And I think particularly thinking about artists who would visit that exhibition, there's an optimism there that they can produce a work that may, that may be open in that way so that they, they could think about things. But I wonder if, if those situations encourage a particular way of working for artists. And I think, uh, Carolina, maybe you could reflect thinking about the archive and how how um, artists and I, I want to say filmmakers, because a lot of the people in uh, your archive and the people you're talking about screening would once have been considered filmmakers within a filmmaking context uh, and have now moved forward and some obviously still making films. C can you reflect on, on that kind of transition that some of them have made? Yeah, the, this transition, I mean, we... Um um, with the with the project that we did, not not so much in the archive because the archive normally they are digitalized works, both from they might come from a more a gallery artist or from a filmmakers, and we have there in the in this uh, collection, you know. But uh, for instance, when we came uh, when we were working on this from ecstasy to outburst, we came across um, some issues with some artists, some experimental filmmakers that had been forgotten for years, and then all of a sudden, the institutions, the big museums like Reina Sofia in Madrid, started to acquire the work. And then they didn't know how to handle. It was more a practical uh, question, you know. They say, "Well, I don't know if I'm a, if my work is in the museum. If I can lend that to you, if it's just a fee for one screening, or now it's a work of art." So. It was, it was kind of sweet because they were filmmakers that sometimes they had been forgotten for years and all of a sudden, and in part thanks to, to this project, they started to gain recogni recognition because as you know, in the, the galleries or the museums didn't care about experimental film for years. I mean, it was more the art, the um, video art that entered the gallery right away, you know, and but, and, and the people that were knowledgeable about what was happening in the experimental film world knew that there was really like some jewels there that were worth it sometimes even more interesting than some of the, of the, of the videos created for the gallery. So f in the last few years, luckily, I think there is, there's been this transit from, from film to the gallery also as a means and we shouldn't forget because it's important the, the, the artists have to make a living. And uh, when some artists undertake very risky productions, no one is going to produce those, th those films. They cannot get into the machine of industry because th they don't have to begin with a format. If you, if you want to apply for a grant, you, either you do a feature or you do a short film. You know, what about if I want to do one minute or I want to do seven hours film? You know, this doesn't fit into the, all the grants and things normally for film. So the, the, the more the artists, filmmakers, uh, it's easier that they apply for grants and they get into more of the artistic community to actually produce uh, their films, you know. And, uh, and also the fact of when we do organize an exhibition, you know, we also try as many curators do to produce films or to produce works, artworks or moving image works, whatever we want to call them, um, for, you know, with, with the artists. So, so in a way, I think the gallery, the museum has become one of the 
production centers mm -hmm. uh, as well, or production means for 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 the artists or for the for the experimental filmmakers. And then also, it's interesting to see how how the gallery artists are curious to to cross and to go from the white cube to the black box and see what happened. You know, like mm -hmm. this. Artist I mentioned before that she's got a career of almost 20 years always in Vienna and galleries, museums, you know. And for the first time when we approach her, because also as curators we want, we want to push sometimes the artists to do things that otherwise they won't do, you know. <laughs> like I mentioned before in my exhibition I did with, with um, uh, it's another project. When we approach Jan Schmackmeyer, 80 year old filmmaker and artist, to do an installation, and no one had approached him ever to do such a thing, and he's over 80 years old. So, so with Patricia, we, we went to look for her and, and say, What about to show your films in the, in the cinema? And she was excited, and, and after that, she was like, Oh my God, I'm shocked. You know, there's so many things I've seen about my films I had not seen before. So, we we are interested on this dialogue. You know, from from one. So there is one. Of course, there is a conce conceptual part, very interesting. But also there is, I think, a practical uh, side. You know, to the artists and, and filmmakers. It's in it's interesting. I I rem always remember having a conversation with with an artist or. The, I don't know, we're going to not go with labels, but we were talking and I, I, I said, I wouldn't name him, he said, I said to him, so how do you refer to yourself as an artist or a director or a filmmaker? And he said, well, I'm a filmmaker, but the only people that want to show my films are art galleries. And I think that's a unique position. Well, it's, it's, it's not a unique position, but it's an example. But I do think there are uh, artists or artist filmmakers who really don't know where they sit within that whole uh, spectrum. Uh, and I think it is really interesting when we begin to kind of blur, blur those boundaries a little bit. Have you guys ever worked with uh, an artist who only makes film, who considers himself as an artist in the I gallery sense? Harun Faroki, but he considers himself a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But he does things only for galleries as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't think the the artists themselves are so worried. I think it's must us that we need to put them on a drawer mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they don't care. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. do stuff, you know. They sometimes they do films or they do installations so I don't think they're so worried about how they are called you know they just want to make um, his art and, and, and their films you know um, I don't know mm -hmm. I think we do as curators play a kind of key role in a way because we can speak with an artist and they say we're going to work together we're going to do maybe an exhibition or a screening and I'm making this work and it's about this. And they can describe something in maybe two or three sentences that's the most bizarre thing you've ever heard. And as a curator in a museum or a gallery, we can go, OK, great. And then we put a small amount of money aside, and it funds the, the project. And that's the only instance where that sort of transaction or exchange will happen. In the film world, mm -hmm. that would never happen. And I, I wonder. I mean, I always feel I have a responsibility to ch channel more support that way, and I often think about how how can we support that sort of production more. Yeah, sorry. No, I think this is very important, and I, I think <coughs> something we have dis discussed here in Gothenburg right now, also in relationship to, to the fact that we do this section, we look into, as we do right now, the Konstad, is also been talking about how we can promote this kind of productions. I mean, we have to find ways to finance it. Because it's, it's like you say, when, when I'm doing an exhibition with an artist, and I want that artist to do something new for the exhibition, or to, 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 to do a new work, and it's, you don't have to present, and you, you don't have to present so much to me. Mm -hmm. Because I, as you said, I, I, I basically need a sentence, you know, and then we go ahead with it. We, we do that work together. And what will come out of it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
perhaps it, not, it comes out no, nothing at all, but we, we, based on that, so I think that we have to look in this. We have to look into this, the, 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 uh, this kind of production of uh, experimental film or things like that. And I think that the art galleries today, are, in a sense, are the only place to to be at. Mm -hmm. uh, because we don't need that much to go ahead with the project if we have decided that we will work together, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, yeah. Carolina, what sort of uh, responsibilities do you feel when, when, you're working, when you're working with artists and presenting programs and thinking about the archive as well? Well, our main goal is, uh, is to, um, not, not only to show the films, but how to show them, it is vital for us, the way we curate the, the, the films. I think we are the first screen in Spain that started to really be very aware about the curatorship within experimental film or art, artist films, you know. And, and Eccentric became somehow not only one place where to show films that were not seen around, but also a place where to we all of us, it was a school of curatorship for film for all of us. We learned as we were doing it, you know, we started to show films that because of the desire that we wanted to see them, you know. So in the, in the beginning, it was just showing films, you know, we didn't work so much with artists. It was just us. We it was very much revising all our heroes, you know, and people that we really liked, you know, but for the first years. And little by little, we started to move into, like, expanding and opening to other uh, younger artists, other nationalities, and, and, and explore, and that was the most interesting part. So, yeah, our, yeah, our main responsibility is uh, to, to do like a triangle between like curators, the artists and the audience, you know, and to create um, a community, I, I hope, and to create an appreciation for that film. And it is a kind of film that you need to, uh, well, as in any, any discipline, but uh, that we feel that we need to write text about it uh, make presentations, so um, help people to get into it, and 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 I I think we we have uh, the, the 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 most the better compliment that we can have is that so many kids that started to come on their twenties or something to to see it regularly because that's important. Festivals are great. But also, it's very important to have regular screenings through the year. This is what cr really creates a community, you know, of artists. So some people that started very young to come to Eccentric, now they are doing films, and they are uh, um, internationally recognized, like Laida Lerchundi, or um, uh, um, Andres Duque, working more in documentary. So they are people that they grew with that, with that community. And the best compliment that we have from filmmakers is that, uh, that eccentric awakes on them the desire of making films. Mm -hmm. and, and it is a meeting point every Thursday and every Sunday during from October to May. We do have regular screenings, and 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 also not not only from the um, from the artists, but also and this kind of a school of curators, also uh, young j journalists that they didn't have access to those, to those films, like the Lumiere magazine is an online and also now is on paper magazine, uh, exist uh, very much thanks to 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 the screenings we do, and they oh, every time that we bring an artist, they interview so. It is, you know, uh, we, we feel that uh, one of the more rewarding things is to see that, that, that your work really uh, helps to make, to knit a net, you mm. know, around. I think it's, it's really interesting. Um, we're talking about uh, moving image in the context of, of the gallery, and I think that's, that's very well under, understood, but I think moving image within the gallery is very different from, say, painting or sculpture. If you think how many times has paint changed in the last 20 or 30 years, or how many times has uh, sculpture changed in the last 
60, 70 years? I don't know. But then you think how many times has moving image changed in the last five years? even, and you think it's, it's dramatic. And I think those discourses then become vital to understanding and navigating the ways in which uh, not only the artist produces work, because we're talking sort of 15, 20 years uh, of artists being able to work on a computer to edit, uh, edit sequences and put sound together with image, um, and museums having the capability of showing uh, multiple projections in one space. So in that sense, the, the museum is also in evolving very, very quickly. How does the museum adapt to presenting this work? Does the museum have to have an online platform that, that also presents the work? Um, those are all, all things that are, that are changing very, very quickly. And I wondered, from both of your perspectives, how, how do you negotiate those quick changes and those different ways of making and presenting? That's a big question. Yeah, it's a very big question. And, uh, That's the question. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think I have a simple answer to that because uh, from our point of view, it's, it's, uh, it's only through the constant dialogue with the artist, it's uh, him or her, yeah. how to do it. Uh, because it's always there we start, in the dialogue mm -hmm. with the artist. Um, and but. In the institution itself is just trying to keep up mm -hmm. as much as possible. Uh, and I, I have to say, though, but we don't have any strategies for it. You just, in the constant dialogue with the artist, mm -hmm. how do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's the only thing I can say right on this short term. Yeah. I don't know, I think architecture plays uh, in a, an important role on, on, on that, you know. Uh, with with centers that and our centers that have seen on film and on audiovisuals an an excellent uh, an excellent way you know uh, to um, uh, to revise the or, or, to, or to give <coughs> or to give a perspective on 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 the new. Uh, contemporary art, you know. But uh, definitely architecture is what it really, uh, to me, you know, it's very, it's very important on the first thing you do when you are going to curate an exhibition is to, to see the place, how the place it is. Of course, you know, you've talked to the mm -hmm. artists and everything. After you've done all the, all that all that work and and see the work and and of course you know be totally familiar with everything that he's he's done he's doing and everything, but it's really the the dialogue you have with the artist and 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 also this the space you know. Yeah. Uh, well, it's one of the is one of the parts, you know. Now it's 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 very complicated the question you ask. There's many many different you yeah. know yeah, yeah. approaches to to answer that, I suppose. We we are drawing to a close, um, but I wonder if we could return for a moment just to think about the, the title of the the seminar, which, which is expanded cinema and the art institution, and perhaps to kind of think back over some of the things we've talked about. For me, the things that I've kind of drawn out have been that the art institution positions itself as a kind of correspondent or a respondent to, to artists and artist filmmakers in a way that, that although artists move an image has become an art form in itself, it's a very, very different type of art form to, to traditional uh, formats such as painting, sculpture performance. And I think it's key to always to underline, although we are very keen to have moving image considered as an art form, it's very important we don't consider it as an art form in the way we consider those mediums that don't change as quickly or aren't as, uh, as dependent on technologies and uh, methods of presentation and ways in which the artist works. And I think that's probably confusing and a conundrum, and I've probably not explained it very well, but I think to acknowledge the fact that uh, we, we, are, uh, we are talking about moving image uh, within that context of the art world is really, really, the fact, uh, really to say that we've defined a home for it, 
and that home we are kind of just still trying to work out how we best build it. <laughs> Did that make any sense? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a simple question to end with. Um, I have to say that uh, I, I don't work with moving image specifically like mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I don't think about it as much as you do, how to, to see this as a very specific type of art mm -hmm. with its own. Mm -hmm. um, I <laughs> perhaps I... Um, no, I, for me it becomes more of an... I mean, for me it exists as a... a as an, art, as an art form, and like every other works of art I show within the exhibition, it doesn't matter if it's a painting or what, it always needs its own presentation, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And that kind of presentation is always based on the dialogue with the artist. So even though, I mean, I won't give, because we can argue also about the, 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 the development within fields. Mm -hmm. uh, because painting, you know, because painting is not not specifically something on a canvas, but for me, it's always. I mean, I treat it as, an, as a work of art, and that work of art needs its presentation, and that comes from the dialogue with an artist. If the artist is dead, then I have to think about it differently, mm -hmm. and uh, so forth. So I don't separate that. And that perhaps because I don't work with specifically as a moving image or film curator. Yeah. I work as a curator within the art institution. So perhaps I'm doing a lot of wrongs when I show films. What do you, Carolina, what do you? Well, we normally, when, when we do have works by artists or when we have films in, in an exhibition, also we try, a Apart, it, it depends really. It, it goes one by one. It's very specific mm -hmm, mm -hmm. case, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, for instance, in the in the exhibition I curate on metamorphosis, the the fantasy vision of Stadovich, Schwankmayer, and the Quay brothers. They were artists, all very much that belong to the film world. It, it is, it's only on the lately that they've been entering the gallery, you know, and the Quays got that exhibition at MoMA and Schwankmeyer very late in his life, but he's having a recognition also internationally in important museums and everything, but, but somehow it took them by surprise. Not by surprise, but they never thought of their films exhibited in a gallery. So, uh, for instance, for, for Schwankmeyer, he would have been happy just showing next to his works just a little monitor with some sample of his film, you know, and it's like, and there I think where enters your job of light dialogue and say, well, I think we can do this this way, that other ways, and get him involved and in the, for instance, as you say, technology is evolving, you know, years ago we would have done a loop of, uh, or we would have bring maybe the third, it, it was something we thought about, bringing the 35 millimeter projector inside mm -hmm. the, the room or whatever, you know, but at the end we just screened that on, on video, on HD files and so on, even though it's not the format, that, because yeah, normally he wants his films shown only on the dark room, you know, mm -hmm. on 35 mm -hmm. millimeters and so on. So it's kind of this dialogue with the director to feel comfortable about the way you are showing his films, also the issue of showing for the features an ex excerpt that was an issue with him. And then I had to uh, convince him in a way mm -hmm. or to, that for, for the entire exhibition, for that moment that was what my, what my vision was, you know, mm -hmm. and then he respected that. So it was, it's all like a like a dialogue. The, the the fact that, of course, you know, we we screen the films in a, in big uh, in large screens within the gallery space, but also 
we, we show the, the, all the films by those filmmakers, not only in the gallery, but also on a film program mm -hmm. on, the, on the black, on the cinema, you know, in a cinema very similar to the one that you do show. So in a way, it's this going back and forth, you know, from the, from the white cube to the, to the dark room, you know, it's mm -hmm. like a dance. <laughs> between one and, and another, because I do work more with filmmakers, with traditional filmmakers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sometimes with art, with artists that do films, you know, that's, that's also. But uh, it really depends, depends on the case, but definitely there are so many questions that arise when you have to show the, the films of, 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 of an artist, you know, or, or of an experimental filmmaker, yeah. Um, there are so many things we haven't talked about and uh, preservation and all those things are, are probably a whole other uh, seminar, but uh, we're going to have to wind up, sadly. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, Carolina and Mikael, thank you both as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot.